The electrical grid around the world is under more strain than it's ever been before. Aside from an increase in the number of people using high power devices like air conditioners, we now see more frequent natural disasters like forest fires and flood that affect a grid's resiliency and your ability to keep things running. And so there's been a big push in recent years towards backup solutions. Traditionally, you might have employed a gasoline or diesel powered generator. Here at my home, I have my Ford F-150 Lightning, which when the power goes out here at my rural location, well, the truck takes over and just provides power to the home for me. But what if you don't have a massively expensive battery electric pickup truck to provide battery power for you, but you also don't want to use a smelly old generator? Today, I'm going to look at an alternative to this that's coming to the market and is a lot, lot less expensive. This is Vatra's latest rack mount lithium iron phosphate battery backup solution. You can connect up to 10 of these in parallel, giving you a theoretical 51.2 kilowatt hours of battery storage capacity. And if you need to pull power out of these when they are connected, all 10 of them in parallel, theoretically, you can pull power out at a rate of up to 51 kilowatts, which is frankly mind boggling. I don't expect anyone will actually pull power out that quickly though, because the majority of battery backup designed inverter systems that you can add to this, they're going to be closer to somewhere around five to 10 kilowatts of maximum power. But that's fine because this is modular and you can add batteries as you go. The Ford Home Integration System behind this truck cost about $10,000 to be installed to our home. And on a good day, that can provide up to 9.8 kilowatts of instantaneous power for our home. And it will keep doing so until the 130-ish kilowatt hour battery pack in the F-150 has reached whatever point we've told it it needs to turn off the system at. We have it set, so we've got about 30 miles of spare range. So once the truck thinks it's only got 30 miles of range remaining, it turns off the battery backup system, allowing me to drive down to the nearest fast charger, top the battery up and come back. This is a completely different alternative because instead of having your battery on wheels that you take with you, you can insert this into a standard server rack somewhere in your home, connect all of the batteries in parallel and then connect up your inverter from there. Unlike a lot of battery products on the market today, this doesn't have a lot of connections, physical wired connections, other than the batteries themselves, which is normally quite common with this style of battery system. Normally, you have a networking port that allows the batteries to talk to each other. With this battery, everything is done through Bluetooth. You have an app that works with your smartphone and connects to the battery. All the other batteries then connect to each other and talk to each other, sharing information about their state of charge, their health, and all of that good stuff. Our plan is to install this with the solar inverter system that we unboxed earlier this year. But because we have so much going on right now at the channel, we've had one member of the team who's been off for several months on and off. We had one team member who has been unwell and we are preparing for everything electric in Canada next month. So for now, we're just going to stick with the unboxing. But what I do have is a screwdriver and I know that you guys like to have a look inside. So in order to get this apart, we have to take these little ears off. Now it does say on the case, don't take it apart, but we're going to take it apart because I want you to see how it's built inside. Bear in mind that Vatra sells this as a, an option for someone who has an RV, someone who wants to go camping. You, you could, at a push, even put this somewhere in your house as an emergency backup solution, you know, to, to power your refrigerator in a power cut with a small 
external inverter, or you could put it in your server rack and as long as you have an appropriate inverter, use it as a UPS for your server rack. And if you compare the differences in prices between something like this or a proper APC UPS, which can easily exceed the price of this unit, it's actually not that bad in terms of price. It is made in China, which I know some people won't like because of ethical uh, concerns, but it's an option. All right, let's take the top of this battery off. And inside you have your battery management board right here, which makes sure that the battery is healthy and all of the cells are individual. You've got the cell wires going from here into the batteries themselves. And then you've got the smart screen on top here. And there is a ribbon cable that goes from this back to the main board. You've also got your master breaker, which is on the front here. And of course here is where you connect your batteries. This is your positive and this is your negative. You connect them in parallel to other batteries in the pack. Now, I don't have any kit with me to test this capacity claim. It says 100 amp hours at 51.2 volts, which is about 5.12 kilowatt hours. I'll hope to test that at some point in the future, but right now, let's show you the cells. I do want to, however, highlight here that we've got some swarf that is inside the pack from the screws on the outside of the case. Metal swarf that hasn't been filed off. You don't really want metal filings inside a battery, so I'm afraid that gets a down point for that. So you have 14 mil bolts on here, and this just helps hold these bars down, helps provide grounding to the bus bars inside the battery pack, and there's also this sheet here that provides a insulative layer to make sure there's no short circuits on the actual cells. If it was anything more than 51 volts, I would be using high voltage gloves. And yes, 51 volts can still hurt if you short circuit, so just be careful. Again, I'm seeing some metal shavings there, not so cool. But with the bars off, let's show you the cells. Here are the cells. It is a series cell arrangement. There are 16 LFP cells in here. Unlike a lot of the more advanced battery backup packs that actually have series parallel cell arrangements and maybe smaller capacity cells, these are built with higher capacity cells in series. The downside to that is that if one of these cells was to fail, then well, you would have to do some pack surgery and replace the faulty cell. And until that point, your battery wouldn't be very useful. But this all looks quite nicely made. I do still see some metal swath here and there. And initially we thought this might be Loctite, but it does actually look like it is just a marker pen indicating that these have all been torqued down properly. I know other reviewers who've had these have had issues taking the bolts off and some thread issues so i'm not going to do that here it's technically not designed to be user serviceable but it is reasonably nicely designed the other thing that's worthy of note here it is a bit more of a budget oriented pack is i can only see a handful of thermistors to monitor the heat from the entire pack. There's one here, there's one here, and I think there's one in the bottom of the case. There doesn't appear to be any at the back of the pack here. And the other thing to bear in mind is that there is no fan. So this is a passively cooled battery pack. If you're putting this in a server closet, which traditionally gets hot, that might be problematic for you. The other thing that I should probably note before we put it back together is that this has a claimed 5,000 charge discharge cycle lifespan without any noticeable battery cell degradation. Unfortunately, I don't have any way of testing that, but it's also worth noting that how useful that will be will depend on how you plan on using this. 
If you plan on putting this in a rack mount unit in say a server room and you're going to use it as an emergency backup power solution paired to a sensibly sized inverter, then you may only go through one or two charge discharge cycles throughout the year. If you use this on an off-grid project as I plan to do, then you're gonna go through those charge discharge cycles far more quickly. In that instance, you're going to be storing power from solar panels during the day and then discharging the battery at nighttime. So, well, I'll explain what I plan on doing with this in a moment. I've shown you inside and there are some good and bad bits about the design of this unit. As I noted, I wish it had more thermal management inside just one thermistor for the battery pack and then one thermistor for the front of the case that feels a bit on the on on the low side to be honest although lithium ion phosphate cells are pretty bulletproof as long as they are properly designed everyone who has connected this up seems reasonably happy with it i haven't had anybody say it's broken or anything like that we haven't had a chance to test it as i noted earlier because it's just been so busy but we did want to bring you the unboxing here now let's tell you what i plan on doing with it i've got my f-150 lightning and my ford home integration system to run my house in a power cut and during peak power events which we've had a couple of this week when we've been filming that's that's handled that with no problem at all and every time we have a peak power event i earn about 15 to 20 bucks just by running my house off my truck instead of getting power from the local grid but just off camera and if you watch the chicken and garden updates on transport evolve take two you will know i have a really big greenhouse like it's 20 feet long and 10 feet across so that's 200 square feet for growing things like cucumbers and tomatoes and right now it's full of all of those wonderful things in the winter the temperature does drop quite precipitously and in the spring when i want to start growing things early on in the season it would be nice to have some heated mats to make sure that my seedlings get the warmth they need to propagate properly so my plan here is to combine this system with the solar panels and the inverter that we were sent earlier this year and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a little 700 watt inverter tied to this it will trickle charge this nicely throughout the day and then at night time and in the midst of winter or the midst of spring we sometimes get really late winter storms up here this will provide just enough power to keep those heating mats running now those heating mats are not going to be super power hungry they maybe draw one 200 watts each and i'm only going to need to run one or two of them at a time so that is my plan for this we currently don't have power to the greenhouse so this will be completely off grid and hopefully later this autumn we'll be able to start construction on it it might be later in the year it really does depend on how busy we are we are a small team and so sometimes the best laid plans and all that. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of more than the 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Bix Bronson, Philip Panya, Stephen Trudeau, Laura Connolly, Paul Giblin, Kaboombox, Oliver, John Franks, Bill Lassell, Brent Smith, Terry and Rich UK, Wendy Kelly Buddenbaum, Joe Hamlin, Ilian Oster, Brian Carey, Chelsea Williams, and Adekunla Ferinha. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member and get your moment of fame. 
If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address also below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. This month, we're talking about accessibility with our latest t-shirt design. And keep your eyes peeled for a brand new special t-shirt for our trip to everything electric in Canada next month. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think that this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving.